China's newest aircraft carrier, Plans 18 Fujian, or aka Carrier 003, has slipped its moorings and commenced its first sea trial. The Fujian is the largest conventionally powered aircraft carrier in the world and the largest carrier outside of the US Navy's nuclear powered carriers. For the first time for China, this carrier will launch aircraft by catapult rather than off a ski jump on the bow. How good of a design is the Fujian in effectively operating aircraft? How capable will its air wing be? Also, aircraft carriers don't work alone. How capable will the escorts and support ships be that make up the Fujian Carrier Strike Group? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's Fujian Supercarrier. What capability does it bring? This briefing will examine the Fujian as a platform for operating aircraft, the likely air wing it will operate with, the potential composition of a fully operational PLA Navy carrier strike group, and when the carrier might become operational. Plans 18 Fujian was launched in June 2022, and is a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery carrier, similar in size to the former US Navy Kitty Hawk class. Externally, the Fujian appears well laid out. The island on the Fujian has a very small footprint for a conventional carrier, and with only two deck edge lifts, the vast majority of the deck area is available for aircraft parking and preparation for flight operations. Compared to the Kitty Hawk class, which have similar dimensions, the Fujian has a larger available deck area, allowing more aircraft on deck, all things being equal. As with the newest Gerald R. Ford class in the US Navy, the Fujian utilizes electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear. Although the plan employs the DC electrical system rather than the AC system used on the new US carriers. But a great carrier design will offer little if its air wing is not capable. And so China is developing new aircraft to operate off its catabar carriers. First amongst these is the J-15B or J-15T. While the J-15 has been around since around 2010, we are now seeing improved models with domestic engines, upgraded avionics, including an AESA radar, together with the ability to employ the latest PLA air-to-air -air missiles, and capable of catapult launch. The J-15B should offer significant range payload improvements over the current J-15s operating off China's Stobar carriers, mainly as a result of using a catapult system, but likely also due to the new engines. The plan will now be able to utilise the J-15 to its full capability, including its significant kinematic performance and large internal fuel capacity. I've covered this aircraft in a separate briefing linked below. The other significant naval combat aircraft development is that of the J-35 Stealth Fighter. This aircraft appears to be reaching a final form after evolving from the FC-21 land-based stealth demonstrator into likely the plan's primary combat aircraft. We should expect it to have avionics, sensors and weapons at least as capable as those found on the J-20. While still in flight testing, we should expect it to be ready for carrier trials very soon after the Fujian completes its ship trials. The final naval aircraft development relating to the carrier air wing is the KJ-600. While the plan does operate ship-based airborne early warning and control aircraft from the Liaoning and Shandong carriers by way of the Z-18 helicopter, fixed-wing aircraft offer far greater altitude, range and endurance, critical for a carrier strike group. The plan is in late-stage testing of the KJ-600 and we should expect it to be ready for carrier trials very soon after the Fujian completes ship trials. The other critical component of the carrier air wing is its anti-submarine warfare aircraft. While not new, the Z-18 offers significant rotary wing anti-submarine warfare capability. It is a large helicopter in the same class as the Augusta Westland AW101, has good range payload performance and large internal volume for crew and equipment when compared to most ship-based anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Although the Z-20 will likely be a capable ASW platform, given the space available on a carrier and the benefits of a larger helicopter, it is more likely we'll see the Z-18 on the Fujian. With these aircraft, a nominal air wing for the Fujian might look like the following. 24 J-35 fighter strike aircraft and or GJ-11 UCABs. 24 J-15 fighter aircraft, also covering strike, 
tanker functions and potentially controller aircraft for UCAVs. Five, J-15, electronic warfare aircraft. Five, KJ-600, airborne early warning and control aircraft. Ten, Z-18, anti-submarine warfare helicopters. And two, Z-18, search and rescue helicopters. The final component of the carrier strike group's capability are the supporting vessels that make up the group. The largest and most capable of the escorting combat vessels will be the Type 055, equipped with 112 universal VLS cells, six lightweight torpedo tubes, a 130mm gun, a 24-cell point defence missile system, a close-in weapon system, and two ASW helicopters, either the Z-18 or Z-20. The 055 contributes significantly to all warfighting domains, but will likely have a focus on surface strike. The Fujian Carrier Strike Group will likely have at least one Type 055, providing additional long-range strike capability to the Carrier Strike Group. While the Type 055 has significant anti-air warfare capability, the primary air warfare vessels of the Carrier Strike Group will likely be the Type 052 Delta Lemas. Equipped with 64 universal VLS cells, six lightweight torpedo tubes, a 130mm gun, 24-cell point defence missile system, close-in weapon system, and an anti-submarine warfare helicopter, the 052 Delta Lemas contribute to all warfighting domains, but will likely have a focus on air defence. The extended Delta Lima variant operates the Z-20 ASW Hilo, improving its ASW capability. It is likely the carrier strike group will include at least two 052 Delta Lemas. The last element of the combat escort force for the carrier strike group will be the type 054 Alphas and in the future the 054 Bravos, anti-submarine warfare frigates. The 054 Bravo was equipped with 32 cell vertical launch system, likely eight slant launched anti-ship missiles, six lightweight torpedo tubes, a 100 mm gun, 24 cell point defence missile system, close in weapon system and one helicopter. As with the extended Delta Lima variant of the Type 052, it can operate the Z-20 ASW helicopter, improving its ASW capability. The carrier strike group may have as many as three or four given the likely submarine threat and the limited number of very capable ASW helos within the carrier strike group. The service combatant escorts will be supported by a large AOR or fast underway replenishment ship. These vessels are critical for long endurance carrier strike group deployments. Only the US Navy and Royal Navy operate vessels with this level of capability. Note we are yet to see an additional Type 901 to the two already in service, or similar vessel being constructed to support the Fujian. The surface force will likely be augmented by one or two nuclear powered attack submarines in a similar manner to a US Navy's carrier strike group. Currently likely to be one of the Type 093 family but moving to the Type 095 class as they commission. The Fujian Carrier Strike Group will likely look very similar to the plans existing Liaoning and Shandong Carrier Strike Groups, possibly consisting of the Fujian, one Type 055, two Type 052 Delta Limas, three to four Type 054 Bravos, one Type 901 AOR, and one to two nuclear powered attack submarines. Such a strike group includes all key capability elements, a Katabar carrier, surface combatants with large numbers of long range surface strike missiles, and vessels specialized in anti-air warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and logistic support. In summary, externally, the Fujian appears to have a good layout for an aircraft carrier with a large deck area, but with only two lifts, suggesting it is designed for higher tempo, but shorter duration operations. Its air wing, comprised of new fixed wing aircraft that will be catapult launched, will provide significant capability increases over the plan's current air wings. With the J-15B fulfilling a complementary role to that of the future J-35, the J-15 is unlikely to be fully replaced by the new stealth aircraft. The resources allocated to its development, concurrent with the development of the J-35, indicate as such. With these two aircraft, the plan will possess a capable mix of long-range, large payload fourth-generation aircraft, 
together with a stealthy fifth generation fighter strike aircraft. Supporting the carrier, the plan has created all the necessary components for a full spectrum and very capable carrier strike group. As a force multiplier to these service combatants, the plan's large, fast underway replenishment ship, a capability only the US Navy and Royal Navy possess, will facilitate enduring carrier strike group operations beyond the first island chain. When the carrier Fujian is operational, we should expect planned carrier strike group deployments to be both more frequent and farther ranging. Finally, the ship itself could become operational quite quickly, given little if any changes to the propulsion system. For reference, the Liaoning took approximately 12 months from first sea trial to commissioning, and the Shandong about 18 months. The new air wing, however, could take some time to be certified as it largely comprises new aircraft and the crew needs to master catapult launch procedures at sea. Successfully operating the carrier as part of the carrier strike group should proceed quickly given the plan's experience over the past 10 or so years operating the Liaoning and Shandong carrier strike groups. We should expect to see the Fujian properly commissioned possibly around the middle of 2025 and not fully operational with air wing until late 2025 at the earliest. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.